Il prurito è il sintomo più invalidante nelle persone con dermatite atopica. Qual è l'eziopatogenesi di questo problema e la concausa della dermatite atopica presente anche nella prurigo nodulare? Ne parliamo con il professore Gil Josipovic, professore di dermatologia alla Miller School of Medicine della University of Miami e direttore del centro sul prurito di Miami in occasione del congresso europeo di dermatologia in corso a Milano. Uh, Professor Josipovic, what is the impact of itching on patient quality of life with particular focus on the prurigo nodularis and atopic dermatitis? Yes, thank you for your excellent question. Uh, in both diseases, uh, itch is a predominant factor. However, in prurigo nodularis, the itch intensity in the majority of the cases is way higher than the average atopic eczema. And in both diseases, the effect on quality of life is significant. But it seems with parigonal dolaris, the effect is even worse than in the majority of atopic eczema patients. And what are the characteristics of uh, pruritus in chronic inflammatory diseases such as prurigonodularis and atopic dermatitis? And uh, how does it differ from other forms of pruritus? This is a complex question. There are a lot of uh, differences. All the types of itch um, share in common that uh, patients suffer from them. But the unique features of, uh, of let's start with parigonodularis. In parigonodularis, there are uh, nodular lesions that are unique. There are fibrotic lesions. This uh, you don't see in the classical cases of atopic eczema. In addition, the location of parignodularis is usually more in extensor surfaces, in arms, legs, trunks. Uh, rarely you could see itch in the scalp where you can have an atopic eczema significant itch and changes. In eczema itself, there are a lot of inflammatory redness um, and lichenification. And in the classical parigon of the laris, you see less lichenification, but you see these nodular lesions. In terms of other chronic inflammatory disease, it depends on the disease condition. Uh, psoriatics itch very much, but uh, it is different from atopic. And we can go over each one of the diseases. So I think it's beyond today's interview. Are there any differences between uh, uh, dermatite, atopic dermatitis and prurigo nodularis with regard to pathophysiology, intensity and characteristic of the itch? If yes, what are they? Yes, there are differences. There are also similarities. In both conditions, type 2 inflammation has a significant role. But one of the differences is actually that in atopic eczema, the majority of the pathophysiology emanates from epidermal layers. There's a significant damage that is associated with the barrier damage. In parignodularis, the uh, inflammation and the receptors and the cytokines involved, uh, although they're similar, they are um, involved in uh, the dermis. Uh, there is less involvement in the pathophysiology of, of the skin barrier, although it could be damaged due to the scratching. So this is a unique difference. Uh, also in terms of the uh, makeup of uh, uh, cytokines, there could be differences. How important is each control as a therapeutic goal in atopic dermatitis and prurigo nodularis? In both diseases, it's a major issue for the patients. This is what the patients want first and foremost, to have less itch. But I have to mention that in um, atopic eczema, there are different severities. And in terms of parigonodularis, the majority of the patients with parigonodularis itch is really the key driver of this condition. And uh, therefore, the main goal of treatment is to reduce itch. While in atopic eczema, there are some other issues such as inflammation that is more prominent and therefore targeting the inflammatory component is extremely important.